Yeah, I know. I mean, you can never look too good on. And Manuel, are we live? Hey, what is up, you guys? Bolt Clan 3117 back here again. We bring you guys another video. This one, however, is going to be talking to you about everything you need to know about the Stephen King It movie adaptation for the first time coming to you September 8th, 2017. Now, without further ado, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Okay, everyone, so we're going to be talking about, of course, Stephen King's It movie adaptation, which is going to be the first time we ever see a, uh, a film adaptation, excuse me, for Stephen King's It. Now, don't be confused. I know some of you might be getting ready to correct me now, but uh, the miniseries movie that we got for the TV, you know, adaptation of Stephen King's novel, it wasn't a full movie. It was just a TV, you know, mini movie that was of course only shown on TV. Of course now there's DVDs, there's DVD covers of it and everything. But I mean the the budget of that of that was very very, you know, small and it pales in comparison to what they had what they have now going into an R-rated, you know, big budget blockbuster movie. It's going to be big and I'm very excited for this and you know, we need to think about what we've seen before in that old, you know, TV movie for it. And the technology and filmmaking back then in the 1990s, or maybe in the late 1980s, I'm not sure when exactly it came out, but we have to remember the filmmaking technology back then wasn't very great. I mean, obviously, it's shown in that last scene of the film where, you know, Pennywise, um, spoilers here, if you haven't seen it, if you want to see the TV series or TV adaptation film of Stephen King's It, go ahead and back out now because I'm going to be spoiling the hell out of it for you. Okay, so now we're going to be talking spoilers in case, you know, you you haven't seen it or you want to see it, whatever. Um, but in that last final scene where we get to the third act or whatever, the final confrontation, as you will, uh, we see that Pennywise is now this giant spider, which just looks horrible, and it kind of ruins the movie for a lot of for a lot of people. And a lot of people don't like it to begin with. People think that you know, oh, they left a lot of the good stuff out from the novel. And I I think that while that might be true, there's also considering the fact that it, some people just think it's too long. I don't have a problem with it. I love it. I think you know, I that's just me being a sucker for horror movies. You know, whether it's good or bad, I'll watch it all. I mean, I I saw Unfriended. Let's just say that. Um, <laughs> but yes, let's get down to the nitty gritty. We want to talk about, you know, it because it's the first time we're seeing a movie adaptation, like I said. So, just in case you're not familiar with it, because I'm a huge fan, at least of the at least of the TV film that we got for. I I will admit I've not read the novel yet. I haven't done it, and I need to do that. And I plan on doing that this year. I'm gonna get to it. But if you want a description for the film, it says here in a small town in Maine. Seven children, known as the Losers Club, come face to face with life problems, bullies, and a monster who takes on the shape of Pennywise the Dancing Clown. And basically what Pennywise does is he feeds off of fear. And he's been living in this town of Derry, Maine for hundreds and hundreds of years. And it's a what he is is he's a plague, he's a sickness to this town of Derry and the the adults of this of this town they know it but deep down inside they just want to put it away and pretend oh no this is hap this is a happy place to live in every 30 years you know when he's gone for 30 years he comes back every 30 years but for those 30 years while he's not there we can all just pretend that nothing's going on and when he does return people just you know pretend that it does they don't they don't even want to acknowledge the fact that Pennywise is there killing kids and kids are missing every 30 years or so and they're getting killed off and just maliciously being eaten alive by this monster. So, um, I really like the fact, uh, if you haven't seen the, uh, the costume for Bill Skarsgård's version of Pennywise, I'm not too big of a fan on the costume per se, but I do like the makeup. And I think up close, if you see those pictures in high definition, it looks creepy as hell. I'm not going to lie. Um, give me a little bit of chills, a little tingles. He's got the buck teeth now instead of the sharp fangs that, of course, Tim Curry's Pennywise had. Which, of course, was just played brilliantly. Um, what do I have to say, really? Uh, 
first we know Bill Skarsgård is playing Pennywise. If you don't know who Bill Skarsgård is, you can see him on, on, on Netflix original series called Hemlock Grove, which is a horror series you might want to check out. I haven't seen it, but I know he's on it. Um, as for the cast, um, if you're not familiar with these characters, I'm going to talk to you about them. Uh, first off, we have uh, probably, this isn't going to be the uh, order of, you know, the most important, the least important characters. This is just the order that I'm going to be reading to you off the uh, top build cast from, you know, IMDB here. Uh, first, we have Finn Wolfhard, who's playing Richie Tozier. And if you don't know who Finn, Finn Wolfhard is, um, he is, uh, he played Will Bowers in Stranger Things, which is another original series on Netflix, which if you haven't seen it, please stop watching this and go watch Stranger Things because it's awesome. It's amazing. It's everything you want. It's, you know, nostalgia for anyone who's lived in the 80s or likes that era. But, yes, he played Will Bowers as one of the kids in Stranger Things, and he's going to be playing Richie Tozier in this uh, film adaptation for Stephen King's it. And Richie Tozier, the character, he's kind of the comedic relief of, you know, the group of characters. There's seven kids total. And, you know, he's kind of, you know, this little tall, lanky, nerdy kid who's, you know, got the wise jokes. He's got witty comebacks. And, you know, he's just, he's a bit of a comic comedic relief. And next up, though, we have the main character, who's uh, Bill Denbro who has a stutter and he's just uh, you know an easy victim for for bullies to pick on and all of these kids really have something in common which is that they are all you know victims of bullying and I think that's a, a strong you know narrative that we have going in with all these characters is they all share that that they've all been bullied but not only that but they of course also are all being you know um, stalked by Pennywise the dancing clown but Bill Denbro is being paid by Jaden Linbury or Linbra, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but I've never heard of the kid before. But I mean, you know, it'd be interesting to see what we get from him. Uh, of course, we have some other characters here. Let me just fix this. Uh, we have some other characters. Um, I noticed one thing that was very interesting is um, we have Stephen Williams playing Leroy Hanlon, and I've never heard of this character. I've never read the novels, like I guess, but I assume because just the because of the last name that he is the father of Mike Hanlon who's also one of the other kids who is a black character in of course this 1957 world where it's the 1950s you know everything with you know the civil rights and just World War II just getting over with you know people use the n-word for this character a lot and that makes him a target of bullying in this you know largely white town you know the, the population is largely white there so it makes him a target for bullying and, and his father I believe in the novels uh, is uh, chased down and killed by the KKK so we might be getting some horrible backstory here with his father I don't know we'll see um, Sophia Lillis is playing Beverly Marsh and Beverly Marsh is a character who's dealt with I believe a lot of uh, domestic abuse at home with her father and maybe even some sexual abuse so she's uh, kind of an outcast as well as school which makes her you know want to hang out with Bill and Richie Tozier and, and, and you know all the other characters as well she's an outcast and she's a very interesting character I thought in the uh, of course TV uh, adaptation of it uh, next we have Wyatt Olaf who's playing Stanley Uris and Stanley Uris is a Jewish kid of course in the 1950s fresh off of World War II makes him an easy target for bullying and he's a bird watcher he's a good little boy scout you know he's uh, probably one of the least developed characters in the TV series and of course I've heard the novel as well but the actor you might know him uh, he played young Peter Quill in the 2014 film Guardians of the Galaxy for any of you Marvel fans out there he played young Peter Quill so I, I think he's gonna do fairly well playing Stanley uh, as, as you know, of course, assuming they give him anything to do, considering that Stanley's not really a big of a character in the TV adaptation. Next, we have Jeremy Ray, who's playing Ben Hanscom, and Ben Hanscom is a personal favorite character of mine from all the kids. And uh, he's, you know, he's just a really fat kid when he's, a, when, you know, throughout his, you know, childhood and his teen years. But of course, he he overgrows that when he gets older. But that makes him as well a victim of bullying, and of course he doesn't have the best situation. He doesn't have his father with him. It's just him and his mom living with his uh, aunt and his cousin, who he does not like. And uh, he has a crush on Beverly Marsh, and she doesn't really realize that until they're adults. But he's a character who I think is very good, and he's one of the main characters actually. Um, next we have Jack 
Grazer playing Eddie Casparo. And Eddie Casparo is a character that I really like because he's he's a bit of a mama's boy, but that's no fault of his own. His mom is, you know, is really, really close to her son, and she she's gotten him to believe that he is sick and that he has asthma, but he really does not. Uh, it's just all in his head. All of that has been put in his head by his mother, so of course that makes him be viewed as weird by, by other kids in the town. And it makes him, his mother makes him believe that he's weak and frail and can't do anything. But really he's not sick. He doesn't have asthma, but his mom gets him to believe that. So he's just another interesting character that we have. And of course, uh, last but certainly not least here, is um, uh, Mike Hanlon, who is, uh, like I said, the son of, uh, I guess, Leroy Hanlon. And he is, like I said, black kid who's easy target for bullying. Uh, he really kind of keeps the group together, I would say. He's really the, uh, yeah, the glue that keeps this crew together. And so basically what happens in the movie is, you know, we get a bunch of uh, flashback scenes that detail how all these kids interacted with Pennywise in their childhood. And, you know, throughout the film, Mike is calling all the other characters, all the other kids, as they're adults now. And he's telling them, you know, Pennywise is back. We have to get rid of him once and for all. And so everybody comes back with the exception of Stanley, who commits suicide and kills himself because he does not want to go back and have to face Pennywise again because he's just that terrified, even as an adult. So um, we have just six characters now, and they go back to Derry. And what they basically have to do, which is where I think the TV uh, film adaptation, the TV adaptation really falls apart in the second half, because it's just not as good as the first half where they're, when they're just children because now when they're adults I feel like the, just the quality of the entire uh, story kind of goes down at least in the TV adaptation I haven't read the, uh, the novel and I hope to do that very soon but um, yeah like I wanted to say uh, it's, it's, the tone though for this movie I think is very creepy but uh, hopefully for what we do see in the 2017 adaptation is uh, it's going to be R-rated. It's going to be R-rated, and the first, uh, it's going to be supposedly two movies, and the first one being just about the kids, which I think is brilliant because you know that's the best part of this entire, uh, at least when we got from the TV TV adaptation, was just the kids' point of view. I want to see that. It's easy to relate to kids, of course, with me being younger. I'm only 18, and it's just the characters who they are. You know, just being the weird social outcast, I can relate to them. And I know a lot of people who can relate to them as well. They're easy characters to relate to. And that's something that Stephen King does very well, is create, you know, very relatable, real characters that you can get behind and feel for. So, you know, I'm very interested in seeing the first half, and I hope it does very well, and I hope it's very creepy. The director, Andres, uh, let me hold, hold up, let me try and get his last name here. Andres Muschietti, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Uh... He, his really claim to fame is the movie Mama, which came out in 2013, I believe. And Mama, I did not like that movie, I'll be honest with you. But as a director, he certainly made that movie. The tone of it is very creepy and it's very eerie. So I can just imagine what he's going to do with Pennywise in this world. And I believe the movie's set now in the 1980s, not in the 1950s like the original. But I'm okay with that. I love the 80s. I just watched Stranger Things. You know, it's all, it's all nice and dandy. So, uh, as for the writers, we have Gary Doberman and Chase Palmer. Chase Palmer, I've, he's done a lot of you know smaller time independent movies. I don't really know him that well. Uh, Gary Doberman has uh, made, uh, just, I'm gonna be honest with you, he made a really bad movie called Blood Monkey, which is part of the Man Eater series. Horrible. Don't watch it. It has F. Murray Abraham though, if you're interested in watching for him, I guess, but. Uh, he also made, his biggest movie is Annabelle, which is a spin-off from the, uh, you know, the doll from the original Conjuring movie, the first Conjuring movie. I didn't think that movie was very good. Uh, some people like it, some people don't. I personally, it's not my cup of tea. I didn't think it was very good. Uh, he did have uncredited uh, rewrites for both Final Destination 5 and the uh, reboot of The Nightmare on Elm Street, which uh, gives me a little, uh, a little bit of hope for him. And so I'm interested in seeing where they're going with the movie. Um... I think I've really gotten out everything I want for you guys. Uh, it looks very creepy. Like I said, it's R-rated. Some of these uh, set pictures that the director shared on his Twitter, if you want to follow him. Uh, his name is, uh, like I said, Andres Muschietti. 
If you want to follow him, he's left off some creepy photos. There's this one picture of this missing poster of a girl who's in black and white, and she looks horrible. She looks scary as hell. And there's another picture that he shared of a little girl's uh, decapitated head in some type of river or lake, and it just... I'm looking at it right now. It looks freaky as hell. I don't like seeing decapitated, uh, you know, children's heads. So, I mean, I'm hoping that it's very creepy. And it, it's going to be R-rated, so I'm very much looking forward to it. And like I said, Pennywise, in his makeup, looks very, very creepy. I'll be honest with you. Um, that's really all I have to say, I guess, for what I'm hoping for and what we know about Stephen King's It. Uh, coming out in 2017. That's really all we know for now. Um, uh, yeah, that's really it. Uh, I know there's probably a few things that some people who've read the novel, maybe you can talk talk to me a little bit about the novel without spoiling too much because you know I want to read it myself, but I know there's this really, really weird, you know, orgy with all the kids, which uh, just feels weird to me. But I mean, of course, I can understand why Stephen King might want to do that, but it just feels weird hearing it, you know? And I doubt they'll do that in the movie. Or even, you know, allude to it a little bit. I don't think they'll do that. But, um, yeah, this has been my video for uh, Stephen King's It coming out in 2017. If you want to see, you know, if you want to hear me talk about it anymore, I'll go ahead and be able to make sure I leave some updates with you for this and other horror movies. Of course, uh, Blair Witch is coming out in September of this year, which I am very much looking forward to. I'm hoping that it is good. I need it to be good. I need some horror in my life. So, um, probably going to be giving you some Star Wars Rogue One videos as we go along. Um, I'm not really sure what else I'm looking forward to this year, but, you know, I'll be giving you guys some more movie updates, more movie videos, stuff like that. Maybe some video games. I'm not sure. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But, um, yeah, you go ahead and like what you see here. If you want to be updated on more horror movies and more, you know, just any other genre of movies that I find and you may find interesting, go ahead and subscribe. Do whatever you want. Like, comment, share, all that good stuff. Alright? Uh, this has been Boat Clan 3117 signing off.